Hi, I'm Rhonda. I've um, been farming and ranching for over 20 years now, and I've always used as my ranch hands, and they've been really useful. I don't know what I'd do without them. Uh, I do all my own training, and it seems like the last few years I've been asked a lot by friends and friends of friends if I could help them with tips on how to train their dogs to herd livestock. The only problem is I live so remotely that it's hard for people to come out and for me to help them. And so the suggestion was brought up to me if I could make some training videos. So I'm stepping out of my comfort zone and, and I've decided to go ahead and give it a try. So here I have somebody I want you to meet. Hang on. Hang on. This is Elvis. Now there's some things, I have some goals set for him, and the one thing is I want him to be happy, and herding livestock makes a, a herding dog happiest of all. I want him to be respectful, and I want him to have a lot of self-confidence. So today, I would like to share a few little tips on how to start with that goal of giving him confidence and, and the respect that we need. So this is the first time he's had a collar on. So he's brand new at it and he's not acting too badly because usually, usually with the collar, they're, they're kind of, they get a little bit dramatic and they start scratching at it and rolling on the ground and, and doing all kinds of fun things. But they do get used to it rather quickly. A little windy out here today. Also, it's the first time that he's gonna be on a leash. Now to get those, um, traits that I just mentioned, confidence and uh, respect, I'm going to teach you about lead training. It's very important because it's going to teach them how to pay attention to you and it's going to teach them to have respect for you because you got to remember that you two are going to be a team. You're going to work together as a team. And so he's got to pay attention to what, what you're doing and, and what you need to do. So the lead training will give them all of that. So I'm going to step back here and, and uh, let's see what he does. Right now he's just a little baby. He's uh, between eight and nine weeks old. And uh, I don't expect him to do very well. I haven't really tried very much with him yet. And so he's going to jump around, I expect, and, and uh, fight me a little bit on it. But just uh, be gentle and be uh, reassuring to him and give him lots of praise. and. And uh, it'll take no time at all in the next week or so that he'll be perfectly lead trained. So let's see how he does. Hey, hey Elvis. So I would give him some little gentle tugs. And in the future, we're always going to have a loose lead, so you don't want him to be pulling you around and you don't want to be dragging him around. He wants to, you want him to stay with you and to have a loose lead, and that will teach him so much respect uh, for you, good manners, and also um, it will teach him to come when he, you call him. Come. Come. Now just give him some little sharp little tugs and then I let go. Atta boy, good job. And when I work with him, um, I just want little short training sessions. I don't want to make it work for them. I want I don't want them to grow tired of it, and I want it to be fun. Atta boy. So lead training is very important, and we'll be uh, working with him on that for the next few weeks. And uh, even if you're starting an older dog, lead training is still important. A boy, come, yeah, that's right. <laughs> the next thing we'd want to teach him before we get started on the livestock is um, confidence building. We want our dog to have confidence. So with puppies, um, now he's not, he's not uh, showing any uh, lack of confidence yet. He, he's a pretty well-adjusted little puppy. But a lot of times your pup will roll over and lay on their back and it's an invitation for you to reach down and pet their bellies. And that's really cute and very tempting to do. 
but it's actually showing that he's being submissive and I don't really want him to be submissive. Uh, I want him to have confidence in himself. So if he rolls over on his back, I'll just have him do it for me, uh, even though even though he's not not being submissive. Hey. So if he rolls over and he wants you to rub his back, his belly, I would actually say, come here, come here. I would make him get up and then when he gets up, he's so young right now, he's not really paying attention. But as they get older, they're going to roll over on their back and be submissive. And you just tap on your leg, have him sit up. And when he sits up, then you go, good job, good job. And um, also, they might get a little timid um, and afraid of, of certain things that you come across. And he'll go between your legs or he'll hide behind you. So I would just simply step back behind him and then say, good boy, good boy. That's right. Um, so that's, that's the trick for confidence building because I'm on a, a nice, confident working dog. Um, I'm going to give you a, some advice as uh, puppies always want to jump on you. As they get older, he's going to start jumping up on you or other things or other people not having good manners and you're going to want to yell at him and say get down or down don't say the word down because later we're going to be using that as a hurting command and so we don't want to use it as a correction um, or yell that uh, command at him because he's not going to like that word down um, so i use what i use is off get off so if he jumps on me and i'll just say get off and instead of using the word down it's just something to remember now, also, I'm going to let him go. Um, also, uh, some things to think about and to remember also is um, short training sessions. Just keep it short. Uh, they have short attention span. Also, we don't want to overwork them. We don't want them to think it's work. We want them to have fun and enjoy what he's doing. So t short little training sessions. And always use lots of praise and uh, encouragement. Another thing is I don't give treats when they do the right thing. I give praise. Uh, he's a Border Collie. I think he has a little McNabb in him maybe. And um, they just really want to please you. Um, and so just praise and, and uh, encouragement is all they really need. They really enjoy it. They'll want to work harder for you then. Uh, they're born with all these wonderful natural instincts to herd livestock, uh, to gather. And so when we start training them, um, pretty soon we'll be imprinting them on sheep. But when we start the training, uh, he'll start, he'll have a natural tendency to want to circle the sheep. And I'm just going to tell him what he's doing w with using a command for a herding, a herding command. And I'm just going to tell him what he's doing and work with it. And pretty soon he'll pick up on it and I can actually tell him what to do then, you know, away, which means go by in a counter clock direction. Um, if he starts circling that way, I'll just say away, away, and I'll follow him and tell him what he's doing. And pretty, they'll pick up on it really quick and they never forget. And so when I start a new training session, maybe a week later, uh, he'll just pick right up where he left off. Um, there will be frustrating times and you're going to want to yell at them or, and give them a good correction. Um, right now it's hard to imagine he's so little and sweet and innocent. But uh, as they get older, they, they get a little knot-headed and, and, uh, and don't do what you're asking them to do and you know they know it. But you're going to want to give them a correction. Please don't uh, yell a command in, in a correction voice. You can, you can correct him, you can yell at him, but don't use the command. So if I said go away, you know, to go the away direction or come by, and he doesn't do what I ask, um, I, I'll give him a quick correction, ah, to get his, and then block him and then have him, and then in a calm voice, I'll say away. That's right, good, good job. Um, or you might want to yell a bunch of other things, but just don't yell the command at him. Yeah, always in a calm voice. And uh, as I said before, no begging or bribery. Uh, I don't give him treats for uh, bribery. And also, if he doesn't come when I ask him to come as he gets older and he knows better and he doesn't come, 
I'm not going to bend over and say, please, please come. You know, I'm not going to beg him to come. You stand up straight and, and be firm and uh, get him to come. And if he runs away, you're going to have to go after him, bring him back, and then try again. Come. And uh, I tap my leg. That means come. Uh, when you watch these uh, Border Collies and these other herding dogs, they know what they were born for. They're going, you watch them, and when they're ready, it's like a light switch comes on and the light opens up and they just all of a sudden they get really excited and they know what they were born to do and they, they start circling and that's when they're ready and then you can begin there. Anyway, that's all I have for today. Um, thanks for watching. Bye.